Hey, what's up everybody? This is James. I'm uh, back again on Andrew Tech's channel. This video will also be uploaded on my own channel as well. But um, I wanted to give you guys a heads up. I am filming at nighttime and I am kind of talking a little softly because I don't want to disturb my neighbors in this video. Also, I am using a cheap light that I bought some time ago uh, in this video as a good comparison. Hey, what's up everybody? It is cold out here, but I just got a, a brand new light and I wanted to go ahead and test it out. And that's why it's at nighttime and I'm, on, and I'm doing this at nighttime. But right now it is November 1st and it is really cold out there. So, uh, but anyhow, I wanted to um, tell you that I ended up getting this Veltroc RV08 mini pocket size light. By the way, that flickering, at, that's just my camera causing that. It's, it's similar to the aperture light. It's tiny, it's rechargeable, but this one's from Veltrox. And forgive me, I'm very cold out here, so I try to make it as quick as possible so you ain't gotta worry about listening to my chattering teeth or anything like that. But the purpose of this video is to pretty much test it out. Now right now I have this cheap light Light, I think it was twenty dollars and stuff like that, and it took one of those Sony uh, NF batteries, and it uh, that has been a pretty good light. I actually, for a cheap light, I really love that light. Uh, but the thing about it is, it's a little bit bulky on top of your camera, and, and then on top of that, you got to put one of those Sony batteries in it. One thing I like about this, it's really convenient, you know, pocket size, uh, and it's rechargeable. So you ain't got to worry about having a Sony battery or anything like that. Don't get me wrong, I'm still going to keep um, my little cheap one uh, so that, you know, after I test this out, we'll see how long it lasts. And, uh, and depending on, it, you know, if this one's out of power uh, quickly, I'll still have that as a backup. But uh, anyways, I'll, I'll do some more videos on this and kind of mash them all up together. So uh, hopefully this won't take too long. This is my first test with this and my initial thoughts of it. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, one thing about this, I'm not expecting it to be great because a lot of times whenever I film, I try, uh, unless, I mean, unless I'm running and gunning, but if I'm doing weddings and stuff like that, I always try to set lights up on, um, you know, light stands and stuff like that versus you know putting a light on top of a camera but a lot of times when you're running and gunning you might need a light on top of your camera not only that even if you're doing weddings sometimes it'll be pretty dark in there it might help to put like a small light on top of your camera and kind of you know bump it up just a little bit so that you can get just a little bit of light to help make their skin pop or whatever you know and this footage right here is a good example of when you would need this light. Uh, I used this light at this wedding and I didn't have room to set another light up on a, uh, on a stand uh, so that I can get light coming from a different direction. So I had to go ahead and put it on the camera. And uh, this right here, it did pretty good, although like I said before, it's not as good as the aperture light. It doesn't give you a whole lot of light. And you're gonna see that here in a second. It's not as much light as my cheap $24 light. By the way, if you wanna know what all comes in a package, you get this, you get a nice little adapter to put on top of your camera, the shoe adapter screws in here and also on top of your camera. And also you get this little detachable the freeze on it. and also a charging cable. That's pretty much it. There's nothing else that is in the box except for, you know, typical instructions or whatnot. Okay, this is what it looks like with the light. And this is what it looks like without the light. You can't see nothing at all. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and switch out the lights. All right, so this is what this light, light looks like whenever you got it on. Now, as you can see, it's not as bright as this one right here. And this is the light that I was talking about. Now, this the, the little cheap $24 one. This one is pretty darn bright. It is pretty, uh, pretty bright. So if I need something more powerful, I would use that. For something a little, little quick and easy, I think this light does it. Uh, 
as you can see i'm standing in the same spot as i was whenever this one was on and this one right here was you know, pretty bright it is a pretty bright one to be a you know a little cheap light but it did a trick um, as you can see this light ain't helping out much but if you're at a wedding and you want a little bit of light this does help but let me see if i can change the settings i'm behind the camera right now and i had to turn my big light on just so i can see what i'm doing it has like different modes where you could change color uh, now this right here gave it like a really warm tone out here oh it gave like a nice little red tint <laughs> yeah nice and red so i guess it'd be good if you want a red tint that's pretty neat. I think it also do blue as well. I guess it goes from like red to blue or something like that. Although it does look a little bit more better in my camera or in my phone. Those are basically my first impressions of this light. And I, I was correct. It pretty much goes to red and blue, you know, warm tone, cold tone. On the back of here, you're gonna have a power button a mode button which that switches it from power to color and tone mode and of course you're going to have these two adjustment buttons from here i'm going to show you how to change the modes you just click on the m right there and our highlight it and again i'm sorry because my i should have brought my shutter speed up or something and again, like I said, you just uh, click on the plus or minus button and that or change the color tone. Uh, right now it's on 8500K and you can have it uh, go all the way down. I think it's 35K and it'll be in a red. Oh, maybe it's 31K, my bad. But once you get it down that low, it'll be red. And then of course you can bring it back up. To 84 to make it or 85 and, uh, and to make it all the way blue so but anyhow uh, I'm not an expert when it comes to these lights you know I'm not like uh, that DSLR shooter guy so I'm not an expert when it comes to this but it is freezing out here outside my hands are really cold and I can't really give it a lot of testing is this better than the aperture? I don't know. I never had the aperture light. I thought about getting, I was going to get it, uh, but that was like double the price of this. And I wasn't sure if I would really want it or not. So I think this right here would be good because a lot of times when I use this, it's actually a little too bright to be on top of your camera. You know, and I got other bright, uh, bright lights that'll go on top of my camera. So I got plenty of that. What I was looking for was something small to add a little bit of light whenever I'm filming, but not too much. And it won't be so bright in their faces. Cause if you take a look at this, my goodness, you see that coming at you? Uh, you can see the difference in this light and that one. That light right there, I can see the circles of the light. I can see the circles of the light here, but I can see that this is much, much more brighter than that one is you know so this is more blinding than what that light is and it's like really dark out here so you might want to try to be more closer to your subjects or something like that uh, if you're going to use this light um, and like i said if you want a little bit of a pop whenever you are filming in a darker location and you got other lights up and stuff like that but you want their face to be lit up just a little bit more i probably suggest getting this all in all it's not a bad light uh, although if you want a better light maybe get the aperture light um, i heard a lot of great things about that and maybe get this one okay it's been a few weeks and i want to go ahead and give a quick update before i put this video out and how i feel about it right now basically i do like the light it does okay i wish it was a little bit more brighter but for what i need it for it does okay if you have a sony a7 III uh, or you know most of these sony cameras that are good in low light uh, it works fine for you and, and i probably recommend it for them but at the same time if you're in like a really dark location 
this light might help out a little bit, but not very much. Um, I mean, if you are if you want just a little bit of light to pretty much light up your subject in the dark, this will do fine as you've seen in this video. But if uh, you want a pretty good amount of light in a really dark location, and it's a large location with a pretty good amount of people, this light might not help you out. Now, with that cheaper light, it will help you out. Uh, one thing to note about the cheap light, a little tip for you, if you do get one of these lights, put a rubber band around it. That'll help keep the battery in the, uh, in the holster <laughs> so it won't be falling out all the time. Also, this was filmed on a Panasonic G7 camera. Uh, just so you know how it does with a micro four third sensor. And something, and you know, of course we all know that the G7 is not all that great in low light. It does okay, but it's not anything like a Sony a7 III in low light. My final thoughts is if you could afford the extra 20 bucks and get the aperture, because I'm sure that one will probably be better than this one. Anyways, until next time, <sighs> cold, peace out, oh, peace out, and live longer prosper. Bye-bye. <laughs> It is cold out here. <laughs>